Hello folks and welcome to this brand new presentation of Jackie Robinson and the Montreal Royals 1946 season in review. In mid-June, Jackie's leg was still keeping him out of action, so he passed time doing different things. On June 17th, the glorious Montreal Canadiens, who had just won the Stanley Cup, played a charity softball game at the Montreal Military Hospital. And who better to referee a softball game than baseball players? So Jackie and fellow Royal Earl Naylor officiated. After the game, the athletes toured the hospital to talk to veterans. And despite the fact that the Montreal Canadiens were in the house, Jackie's injury was one of the main topics of conversation. Many injured veterans, including some, as was noted by reporters who had lost limbs on the battlefields of World War II, advised Jackie to take his time before returning to action. During the first two months of the campaign, Jackie won over the reporters who covered the International League, at least according to Montreal Herald reporter Al Parsley. I'm quoting, Jackie's fine restraint and exemplary conduct, his good manners and dignified bearing have entirely dissipated any lingering race prejudice among the reporters who covered the league. He was judged solely on merit. Of course, few of those reporters could talk about Jackie without mentioning that he was black. Generally, it was Jackie Robinson, black infielder of the Montreal Royals, or Negro second baseman, but any race prejudice had been dissipated, allegedly. Montrealers saw pitcher Roy Partlow in action for the first time on June 20th, then again on June 24th when Partlow made his first start in the International League. He pitched well, turning a deaf ear to the razzing coming from the Jersey City dugout to lead the Royals to a 16-2 thumping of the Giants. And the papers were raving about Partlow at that point. La Patrie said that the black bespectacled pitcher impressed with his speed and his control, while the Herald wrote that the Royals had a second black star in Roy Partlow, Dark Wizard, you remember what I told you a second ago about always mentioning that black players were black, right? Who throws with high velocity with his left hand. Meanwhile, Jackie's grim prediction of maybe needing a long rest for his leg turned out to be pessimistic. On June 21st, he was back on the field as the Royals had all their regulars playing at the same time for the first time in three weeks. He had the day off on the 22nd and was back for good in the lineup on the 23rd. He celebrated his return with a five-game id streak, even raising his batting average to 356 on the 26th. Over the course of the season, Rachel Robinson played a vital role in, well, basically keeping Jackie sane while he faced constant pressure and scrutiny. She went to spring training, she often accompanied the team on the road, went to almost every home game, and was tasked, probably in early June, with finding the couple an apartment for the balance of the camping. The team had provided her with a list of potential dwellings, and given the fact that Montreal was going through a severe housing shortage, and that well, they were black, Rachel feared the process might be arduous. She decided to concentrate her efforts on the almost exclusively French-speaking eastern part of the city, despite the fact that neither she nor her husband spoke French. She figured that the English-speaking part of town, being more affluent, would also be more exclusive. But she probably never thought it would be that easy. The owner of the very first apartment where she went, at 8232 De Gaspé Street in the Villeray district, who spoke English, invited Rachel in for tea, rented the Robinsons the apartment, even insisting that they use her china, her utensils, etc. etc. Despite the fact that they were black, Anglophone Protestants in a neighborhood almost exclusively composed of white Francophone Catholics, the Robinsons quickly won their neighbors over. They would check on Rachel, who was pregnant at the time, when Jackie was on the road, gave her additional rationing coupons, the rationing imposed during World War II had not yet been lifted in Canada, they would help her carry her groceries, etc. The Robinsons found a oasis of tranquility in that apartment, it was basically the only place where Jackie could relax. But that doesn't mean they didn't feel like an object of curiosity. We can safely assume that many of their neighbors had never seen black people before. Actually, one of the only French words Rachel Robinson learned in her time in Montreal was noir, which is French for black, from hearing it so often on the street. Add that to Jackie's celebrity status, and let's just say that their presence did not go unnoticed. They felt comfortable in their new environment, but once again, Jackie was alone in a sea of whites. 
Would he have benefited from living in one of the districts where the small black population that called Montreal home back then was concentrated? Or would the adulation he usually received from members of his community proved overwhelming had he lived in a black neighborhood? I don't believe the question was ever addressed by the only person that could have answered that question, and that is Jackie himself. When June turned into July, the Royals had a record of 47 wins and 25 losses, five games ahead of second place Syracuse. In June, Jackie had only 47 at-bats. He got 15 hits, four of them doubles, for a 319 average. He scored 15 runs, drove in seven, and stole only two bases. In our next episode, we'll talk about, among other things, two possibly racially motivated incidents which happened in a span of three days, and an absolutely insane sequence of games which actually allowed the Royals to separate themselves from the rest of the pack. Thanks as always for listening, and talk to you soon.